buried from. That when I first heard the cost of something like 20 to 30 billion, which now remarkably is being talked about in terms of a hundred billion, I say to myself as your Member of Parliament, long before the spare, I thought, could I spend that money in a different way? And the answer is yes, every time. Do I want to get to London 30 minutes quicker? No, I don't. I think it's a relatively unimportant idea. But to spend that kind of money on the railway system to get you to London more quickly is abominable. And so I took a decision to vote against the whole thing. I've never been convinced of it. I never will. And when I came to this meeting some time ago, it was packed out like it is today. I realised then I wasn't on my own. I'd got a lot of other people with me. And you had been motivated by the fact that suddenly came along, somebody came along with a balmy idea to introduce the Newton Spear. God Almighty! What a crazy idea! Nearly as balmy as that when the Mrs. Thatcher said they were going to close 75 pits. She said, really, I'm only going to close 20. But we all know now, don't we? The cabinet papers reveal that there were 75. So when I'm down there at the Palace of Varieties, believe me, I have to weigh up whether the government's telling the truth every time they open their mouth. And it matters little what colour it is either. So I feel confident I took the right decision. And I know that now that we have had a winter crisis in the health service, the same health service that saved my life twice with cancer and a heart bypass, do I wonder why when people are preparing to spend that kind of money on the HS2, it's unbelievable. There's only so much money in the country. And that's why I came to that conclusion. So when I came to Newton for the first time, to that crowded meeting, I realised there were a lot more people thought the same. It's true that the people that went down, I took them down to Parliament to see the Minister, and it's true that they all said, I think they meant it, that there was really a favour of the project but not the Newton Spear. I'm not so sure about it, but who cares? I'll tell you this. It was one of the proudest days I ever had in Parliament when those half a dozen people from here, your representatives, some that you've heard today, were able to destroy that minister, Andrew Jones, in about two hours or under, so much so that he wasn't even capable of answering the argument. The idea of this proposal to knock down 30 odd houses here in Newton is a disgrace and should be opposed by anybody and everybody on councils or anywhere else. That's my opinion. Nobody turns out in numbers like this today or any other day unless they know that the idea is a just one. And believe me, it is. And some of the proposals they put forward that day to Andrew Jones, no wonder he's got the sack. He's gone already. He's one of our casualties in this campaign. And now we've got to fight the battle all over again. Because Grayling, 
The man who used to be Secretary of State for Justice. Just imagine, he was in charge of that domain. And now he's in charge of transport. He's not fit to wipe any of his shoes. Not of it. And so, he knows where I stand on the issue. And I'll never change. I know that it's justified. And when I was invited down to MacArthur Glen last year, I met another group of people. It weren't as crowded as this, but I heard of a proposal to increase MacArthur Glen by 50%. And I said to them, where are you going to put the car park if you're going to build on it? He says, in the next field. I said, are you aware that's part of the Newton Spur? That's where it begins. And suddenly, he realised that his proposal to get another 1,000 jobs had also been destroyed by this daft idea. And so now he's on our side. And I've told him down in Parliament, it's not just about houses being knocked down. And then I managed to get number one question at Prime Minister's Question Time. And quite by chance, there was some information that had been in the newspapers a day or two before, talking about the way they did things in the South on HS2 and the way things are doing in the north. And of 123 miles in the south, they did tunneling five times more than they do in this part of the world. And I propose here and now that you should fight for that tunnel. We shouldn't have the houses knocked down in this area. We should have the same treatment as anybody else down in the south. And that proposal is proven. Tedious Theresa didn't back me up because she couldn't think fast enough on her feet anyway. But that's another argument. So first of all, we've got the spirit. You've got people representing you. Believe me, I saw them first hand. Who are capable of putting the case. It's going to cost a small fortune. And when you think about electrification of the middle of the line, won't it be a, a decent proposal? If you want to get to London a bit more quickly, let's have electrification straight from the top right down to the south. Do you know what they did? And it must have been a deliberate attempt by the government to offset those of us who believe in the electrification of the London line. They wanted to preserve their HS2 to the extent they announced electrification to finish a Corby and Kettering. It's a disgrace. It should have gone all the way to the very top. And maybe we wouldn't have been here this morning. If that had happened, it would have been a death knell, wouldn't it? Because people like you here in other parts of Britain would have said, well, that's a smart proposal to have electrification all the way from Sheffield right down to London. Would have killed it. But some of them are so wedded to the idea of keeping the HS2, I think that statement by this government was deliberate. I agree. I think, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. And so, yes, there's a lot of backhanders in, in, in politics, believe me. You've seen all the knighthoods. Well, I've not got one. <laughs> and you can rest assured 
If I do what I do every day of the week, fighting for causes like this, I ain't going to get one either. I'll tell you something else. I'm not so sure that anybody else wants to give me one. <laughs> So weep no tears for me, I just don't care. I get more enthusiasm speaking to meetings like this about people that are fighting for their own community and doing it in a fashion that I've hardly experienced right the whole of the bones of a constituency. It really is a novel experience. When I speak to Tony, he's the man that I talk to many, many times in the course of the year. I know that I'm speaking to somebody that's fighting not for himself, but for everybody else in the village. Yeah. Now, one of the problems that we face in Parliament is fairly simple. And I said it at the time when it was announced by Patrick McLaughlin as Secretary of State for Transport on the first occasion. I said, it's very interesting. I said, you're very keen on this line of HS2, but it ain't going through Derbyshire Dale, is it? <laughs> no, it was going through both of them. At that time, I didn't know about the Newton Spare, and neither did anybody else in this room. But I knew that the kind of money that they were going to spend was abominable in terms of the return. And so, that's how it began. I want to thank the, the, the people from Bradley as well. Because the number of people that can be on our side is relatively small. Why? because the HS2 is not affecting most of the area of Britain. It's not only Derbyshire Dales it's not going through, it's not going through 500 constituencies. That's the reason, so don't get any exaggerated idea that somehow or other every member of Parliament should be joining us. I'm not daft enough to believe that. They know. It's not in their area. And they don't all think like me and say that kind of money should go to the National Health Service yeah. for the schools and social care. That's where I put it. That's where it's needed. Not on the tip pot line. And then along comes the other proposal. Why did the spare occur? Quite well, simple, really. Because they were talking about the Northern Powerhouse. Down in London. <laughs> yes, down in London. The Northern Powerhouse. They said, let's do something for the North. The Tories suddenly discovered that if they, they were going to get into power, they needed to influence the North. So let's have a HS2. That's how it began. And then Sheffield came along and said, we'd like a station in Sheffield. And this vanity project was agreed. That's how it happened. Believe me, where to any other system? Because we'd already got a scheme going through Meadow Hall that I opposed. But notwithstanding that, they came up with another proposal. So now we've got two lines running through Derbyshire. That's why we've got a slow line and a fast line. The fast line goes to Meadow Hall and then goes straight on or it stopped. God only knows, we're not quite sure. And then they decide to have one in Sheffield Midland Station and so that slow train is going to knock the houses down in Newton and dawdle its way to Sheffield on the old line. We're going to have a fast track and a slow track. That's where you've got the phrase, dawdle through Derbyshire. <laughs> That's what it is. 
and it makes a mockery of the whole idea. And that's why people should be joining us in every part of Britain, not just Bramley, not just Mexford, but all those other areas that are not affected, but come to the same conclusion. There's only so much money in the country, and if we need it for the health service, if we need it for the schools, and if we need it for social care, we can't afford to spend a bundle of money like this on the HS2. Never mind the spare. You've not come to this meeting this morning for the good of your health. Everybody in here knows they've come for a reason. And it's remarkable in itself. There's a television camera there, I don't know where it's from. But there ought to be 20 television units here this morning. This is a remarkable event. This is a tiny village called Newton. <clears throat> Nearly everybody is represented, every family, in this room. This is not part of a city. This is a village. And it's remarkable that whenever we have a meeting, they line up the walls standing. That's how it is. I'm telling you on the telly. That's what you should be doing. You should be recognising this is a phenomenal event. It doesn't happen every day of the week. But when a meeting is called, the people of Newton know that it's so important an issue that they turn up to listen to the speakers who are invited. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. That's why I'll never leave you. I'll never change. I'll fight.